Uh, I just thought I'd make a wee video about Blowing Steady for my pupils, anyone else that's really interested. Um, Blowing Steady is it's one of the most important things that makes your pipes sound good. Like you can have, you can take somebody else's pipes, like for example, Ronnie McLeod. If you can't blow steady, you ain't gonna sound like Ronnie McLeod. Um, and the reason I'm making the video is because most folk are probably used to this in their pipe bands or anything else, and some guy will be screaming, blow steady, blow steady, but it doesn't really explain how to blow steady or what helps to make the steady tone. Um, so number one, make sure your pipes are in good working order. There's no slackness, no bits are falling out, your reeds are tight in, 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 the, in the reed seats. If you've got a sheepskin bag or a skin bag, make sure it's seasoned and airtight. Um, and if you've got a synthetic bag, make sure all the valves or whatever the motion control systems are, are in working order and good to go. Um, next thing other than pipes is posture. Um, next to the video, um, I'm just going to be playing. I'm going to be walking around, kind of turning it in a circle just so you can see. So you don't want to be like that or with your neck twisted or anything weird. Um, you want kind of your head up, try and keep your chest out, back straight, you know, kind of try and look smart if not intelligent. Um, so here's that wee video. Right, so now that your pipes are kind of pretty much set up, you know, the reeds aren't taking too much air and absolutely perfect for you uh, and your posture's nice and good and you're kind of good to look at as well. Um, the next wee bit is like the mechanics of blowing, so number one, you, this is a bit of personal thing for me, I don't like hearing <gasps> or anything like that because that means your vocal cords are in the way of the air coming through. You shouldn't really hear yourself taking a breath really. Um, so for pipes and flute, opera singing, whatever you want. Um, for us, we need to be able to blow and breathe from the diaphragm. So that just means breathing from your belly. And that'll take me a bit of getting used to, to start with, because you don't want to breathe up here. In the tuition book that I've got, there is a kind of diagram kind of explaining why not to do that. Um, basically, if you're breathing up to your chest, it's like a panic breath. Your neck tightens up, your shoulders lift up. And you don't get a good amount of air either. You can't control it. So you want to breathe way down and as deep in your body as you can, so way down in your, in your belly, your belly should come out and let it come out as far as it can go. And then when you're, it's time to blow back out, your abdomen should contract and push the air out. Um, um, so that's, that's the blowing. The arm's quite important. You don't want to be doing too much or too little. It's a bit of experimentation because um, the pressure that you put into the bag and the pressure on the outside of the bag should sort of match to kind of keep that. So that's what basically keeps this tone st steady. Um, and it takes a bit of figuring out to get that right. Um, you don't want to be doing a chicken dance kind of thing. Um, so the next video is just what your belly should look like um, when you're taking a breath, just so you know what it kind of looks like. Right, so now that you are probably getting there into the diaphragm and all that kind of good stuff, um, the next thing is length of blowing because if you're going from the practice channel straight on the pipes this is going to be alien because you're used to blowing for a long time in the practice channel. You don't want to be blowing long when you're on pipes. You want to get the air in and get it back out uh, and the blow should last as long as it's comfortable. Um, you shouldn't be like trying to blow <laughs> um, for like a full length. It's impossible, absolutely impossible as you'll probably see in the next video. Uh, so the next two videos is basically how long to blow for them. I make it quite obvious in the, in the correct way. To, my mouth kind of opens up quite, quite a lot just to make it obvious. Um, after those two, it'll be like dealing with the arm, like what not to do, like you don't want to be doing like a chicken dance, letting the, you know, this should be a kind of constant pressure from the elbow in towards your ribs. Um, and the, when you take a, when you blow back into the bag, you should just push your arm up. It should really knock the arm off, but it should just kind of slowly raise it. Like you won't really see my arm move a lot when I'm doing it right, okay? Um, so just have a look and try it yourself as well.
so now that you know the mechanics of blowing steady and roughly what you're doing, um, there's another thing to worry about and it's how hard to blow. Um, when you start piping, there is a kind of tendency to just give the reed enough just to barely work. Just enough to make to make a sound, but you'll actually find there'll be flat notes, the high A will kind of be minging, it'll be kind of screcking most of the time. Um, and I've actually found if you blow through the reed properly and give it a good amount of air pressure, it, it just comes it comes to, to life a lot more. Um, also keeps your pipes a bit more under control as well. Um, so the next video is, is just an example of not blowing properly, like underblown. And you'll probably hear like the high A's just going, it's, it kind of, it's barely a note, it's, it's just a noise. And then blowing through a bit more, but the high is a bit more clearer and there's actually got a wee bit of a ring on it um, due, due to the sheepskin bag and blowing it properly. <laughs> Is just basically a flat line um because imagery is quite important um for how it blows steady folk think there's like gauges involved in certain numbers that, that just drives you mental it's about feeling and muscle memory so use imagery to help you out so what i was always told as a kid is imagine a flat line on the front of your eyes and um, as you're playing like maybe a, a, a long note or a slower and um, i'm actually the next video is actually just the flat line just a flat line just to kind of show you what, what, what I'm on about and just imagine that's going in front of your eyes and that's your tone. So give that a try and see how you get on. Um, after that is also a Gallic hair and um, you can pick your own Gallic hair um, to kind of try this on as well. Um, but I recommend you choose an imagery, mental imagery just to kind of help you out because it does help. Right, next up is um, a wee video for Gaelic Air. Um, so when you hit like a long note in a set of pipes, there is a dangerous tendency for the pitch to dip. So if you're playing like a, especially D and F and low A in particular, maybe high G as well, um, some of these notes are quite bad for changing pitch if you're not on it. So if, you're, if you hit like a very long D in a tune or a long F or whatever long note it is, you need to try and blow through and the, the whole note almost just to keep it stable especially in a band center because there's nothing worse than when the, the good sound and then all of a sudden this big honking massive stinking D just appears out of nowhere and then all of a sudden the next time you hear the note it's gone and um, it's just laziness um, and not concentrating on your instrument or the music so next up uh, it's McLeod's on more so if or any Gaelic here you'll, you'll land to go and play yourself just make sure you're blowing through these long notes so like Amazing Grace the first D um, you pretty much need to blow through that to keep it down. Like that, okay? 